start in the top ten. The Saints at number one. A 10-game winning streak, the second longest in franchise history, probably the most complete team in the NFL. They are. I love We just showed the touchdown right there. That was the opening drive of the game. And one of four touchdown passes that Drew Brees threw, James, to, to guys that a lot of people have never even heard of. Mm -hmm. Then you have the way their defense is playing, the running game. You saw the blowout against the Bengals, the win against the Rams, this blowout win against a division opponent. Dare I say they're better than they were a month ago? And they were great then. I got to agree with you, man. The last three weeks, they have been turning the ball over on defense, man. And you're getting extra possessions back to Drew Brees in that offense. And if they continue to do this, they are going to be tough to beat. I had the Falcons winning this game, a tough division game. I had the Falcons winning. And they, on Thanksgiving, just beat them up. Last six games, they've outscored their opponents 229 to 116. That is called complete domination. One through ten looks like this. It's the Saints and the Rams. The Seahawks rounding out your top ten. Yeah, and, you know, the Rams, I still think they're a Super Bowl contender. I think they may win the Super Bowl. They were obviously off this week, but I don't know how you stop that offense. The Bears, if you notice in the top ten, are still at number seven after beating the Lions for their fifth win in a row. Yeah, I was really impressed uh, with what the Bears did on Thanksgiving for a multitude of reasons. Number one, their defense stepped up again and won the football game. The other thing is Chase Daniel. I mean, wh where did he get his practice reps? The guy had no time to prepare for this game. Was he practicing in the hotel room? And the Bears defense won it when it mattered. You're absolutely right. The defense showed up when it mattered because this was a tie ball game. Ball in Matthew Stafford's hands in the fourth quarter. And he threw the ball to the wrong guy. Pick six. Changed the whole game. And the Bears, they keep making plays when they got to make plays. And that's what winning football clubs do. Leading the division. And they're going to be taking on the Giants next week. So perhaps they are continuing to move on up. 11 through 20 now. Ravens and the Cowboys 11 and 12. Then you have the Eagles and Falcons rounding out your top. Falcons team. may have been the most disappointing team at Thanksgiving. Now their defense just could not get a stop. The Browns in Houston this week. JJ's already saying they're going to win up four spots to 18. They're riding a two-game winning streak. It's the first time they've won two in a row in more than four years. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. And I, I tell you what, our segment producer extraordinaire, Scott Gripe, looked this up. The Browns haven't been at least this high in the ranking since week seven of 2014. And this isn't even that high. This is number 18, but I'm really glad for their fans. They have something to root for. Offense and defense playing well. Absolutely. I love this Cleveland Browns team. You got Chubb Rock right here running the football. You got Bake Bake throwing the ball. You got a young receiver in Callaway catching the ball. This team right here, man, has a bright future. And I think they're going to go out there to Houston and get this one done. It's going to be tree in a row. Three in a row <laughs> for the uh, law firm of Chubby Baker. 21 through 30. Titans after that loss at 21 now in the Raiders. Yeah, the Raiders he, rounding out top 30. I just want to say that for the Bengals, Jeff Driscoll actually played really well. I know everyone's upset about Andy Dalton missing the rest of the year, but the kid looked good. Almost brought him back. Good for Driscoll, former Gator. Elliot, the power cannot possibly be going out in Green Bay, can it? Take us on a power trip, buddy. Dan, it's flickering. It is majorly flickering in Green Bay. Okay, I started the Packers at the beginning of the year at number nine. I was a little concerned about their defense, some injuries. I didn't know who the running back number one was going to be, if you know what I mean. Then they tied the Vikings. They peaked at number five. Really interesting game. Had that Clay Matthews call. Okay, then you see the straight line here. Yeah. Remember when they beat San Francisco? They were at 13. People were like, why aren't you moving them up? Because they barely beat the 49ers at Lambeau Field. And then you see two losses in a row against the Rams, Patriots. What if Ty Montgomery doesn't bring that ball out? Maybe the arc of the Packers season is totally different. Either way, lost a few games. Now they're at 15. And will they have enough at 4-6-1 and one to make a playoff run? James, can they do it? They'd have to run the table. You heard the quarterback, right? I, I know yeah, who the quarterback is. Arizona. Yes. You remind me every Atlanta, week. Atlanta, Chicago, the Jets. Listen, we're going to start off right there okay. with a W. Go ahead and press that one. All w right, right there, Arizona. I'm okay with that. I'm a little worried about this one, but we're going to get this one done. They got to come to the cold, play in the cold weather. They don't like that. They're going to get a W right I'm there. I'm good so at that. That's, okay. that's two in a row. But most of all, after you win two in a row, you get a little confidence. We know how to win big games here. We've done it time and time again. When the games matter and we got to go to Chicago, we find a way to get a W. They will find a way Wait to get a, a W there. Wait a minute. You mean a little bit of overconfidence, right? They barely beat the Bears in week one. Barely. Okay, they should have lost that game. That was at Lambeau. This is going to be in the cold at Soldier Field. Yep. I, I know what you're doing here. I, I like that you're predicting all these all wins. That, all that sounds good. We beat them. 
and our quarterback was on one leg. He has yeah. two good legs now. The game means something. We're going to want this game a little bit more than the Bears because they might have a good record by the end and have things sold I up. Disagree. This is a W Trubisky's right better here now too. as well for the Green okay. Bay Packers. Another W right here I'm as well cool for the Green Bay Packers. And another W to finish the year off right here. And that is five consecutive wins. And that puts us at 9-6-1. and one. I like what you did here because if they run the table here, uh, it won't be Aaron Rodgers' fault if they don't do it. But it'll hey, certainly Aaron be Mike Rogers McCarthy's. Takes the blame. You heard him stand up no. on the podium say, I have to play is it, better. Is it going to be enough? That's what we need to know. They're going to make the postseason at 9-6-1. and one. I do not think it's enough, but listen, let me tell you something. You better hope it's not enough, because if we do get in at 9-6-1, and one, it's going to be problems for everybody. The whole NFC playoff picture. You do not want 12 in the playoffs. Which of those teams are going to be homebound? Which of them are going to be playoff bound? J.J., let's start with you and one of your former division foes in the Come Vikings. on, J.J. Not just because they beat the Packers Sunday night, but I am going to have to say they are going to be homebound. They are going to be what? at home. Their schedule is tough. They got to play New England in New England this week. They got to go to Seattle. That is two back-to-back -to -back tough games right there that I think they're going to take L's on, and that's going to put them at home. Mm. Yeah, they're averaging just 21 points per game at home. Elliot, mm. how about the Panthers? Yeah, well, the Panthers, speaking of at home, they couldn't take care of business at home, Dan. It was the third loss in a row. They lost to Detroit. They couldn't cover over the top against Seattle, which Ron Rivera said. And they've got some tough games. they got two against the Saints. They're going to be playing at the Bucks this week, who looked a lot better last week. I think the Panthers are homebound for the postseason. Three straight games now for that defense, not forcing a turnover. All right, J.J., what about the Seahawks who won in Charlotte? First off, I'm going to start off by saying Pete Carroll, coach of the year, because wow. you gave up all these players in the offseason. Everybody said, you are rebuilding. And now you're on the verge of going to the playoffs. And as you see the schedule down there, the Niners, the Vikings, the Niners, the Chiefs, and Arizona, I think they can win four out of the last five games, and they are absolutely playoff bound. I'm with you. How about a little home? Homebound, playoff bound, AFC version. Elliot, the Ravens have won two in a row. Lamar Jackson, now the quarterback. Yeah, Lamar Jackson presents a matchup problem. In the running game, you're playing 11 on 11 instead of 11 on 10 because he can run. All that said, look at their schedule there. I think they could lose at Atlanta, lose at Kansas City, lose the Chargers. I'm going to say homebound for Baltimore. And Ooh. the Steelers, by the way, the only team with a winning record the Ravens have beaten all year. Uh, JJ, how about the Broncos? They've beaten the Steelers and Chargers in back-to-back -back weeks. Listen right here. If the Broncos screw this up, everybody should be fired except Von Miller. Because, listen, you have the Bengals with a backup quarterback, the Niners with their third-string quarterback, then you have the Cleveland Browns, then you have the Oakland Raiders. Come on, now that's four straight victories for these Browns. I mean, for these Broncos. If they could get this done, they are going to the playoffs, which is crazy. One segment you talk about how great the Browns are. Next segment you talk about how easy they are to beat. I, I, can't, I don't understand <laughs> you today. All right, so James has the Broncos in. Assuming the Chargers have that other spot, that has to mean the Colts at 6-5 and five are out, right, Elliot? Nah, I don't think so. At Jacksonville this week, I think that's a win. I, James, you love predicting these. At Houston, let's say they lose that, but they can beat Dallas at home. They can beat the Giants, and they can beat the Titans. I like the Colts to make the playoffs. I like the Broncos with those sweet helmets they you wore last week. You said beat to Dallas, go. and you have Dallas yeah. winning the division. Yeah. Huh? Well, that doesn't mean they can't lose a game to the Colts in that division. I have the Colts as playoff bound, Ooh. Broncos homebound. Finally today, it is time for Elliott's closing arguments. We put 30 seconds on the clock. He talked about a couple of teams we didn't get to. 30 seconds, go E. All right, Jax, fire your OC. Yeah, your top receiver gets hurt, your running back doesn't play, and the quarterback is, uh, yeah, well, there you go. Uh, Giants, hey, don't give it to Saquon. That's always a recipe for not winning. Buffalo Bills, Josh Allen, man, if you can't sack him, he's going to run for 40 yards. It's tough. Tennessee Titans, Marcus Mariota goes 22-23. And they lost by two touchdowns. How does that even happen? And the Kansas City Chiefs, still a Super Bowl contender. Patrick Mahomes, still an MVP candidate. I missed them this week. I missed watching that team.